Hey guys, welcome back to Juno New Origins. My name is Twitch here. We've got a buggy little boy here going out and doing a scouting mission for our man, Buck Marshall. They wanted to open up a hiking trail around Juno Village and I agreed to send one of my self-driving cars out to do the job for them. Now with object avoidance, you can see that we skillfully managed to navigate our way through that aircraft hangar and out the door on the other side. Now the single human input was given during that little maneuver there. The whole thing presided over by the Vizi autopilot program that I wrote just before we launched this vehicle. Cool. The entire program is a little bit long just to dive into Raw, so we're going to concentrate on this little section here. It's doing the majority of the targeting for us. You can see that it performs something called the dot product. Now, this is a mathematical construct that does something very simple. It takes two directions. If they are lined up, it gives you a 1. If they are 90 degrees, it gives you a 0. And if they're pointed the opposite ways from each other, it gives you a minus 1. That tells us whether we're looking at the target or not, and of course, it then makes some uh, proportional steering adjustments. We could have retrieved the value for that proportional control from a variety of places if we took the dot product and take took one off of it the dot product being displayed in the flight log at all times by the way if we took that away from one that would give us how far away we are from looking directly at it that could have been fed directly into the controls but it turns out whilst working out the dot product i actually got the target's direction relative to the spacecraft itself and the x value of that gives exactly that number it's the one minus the dot product it's, it's just the way it works out but of course steering isn't the only concern for driving a rover indeed if i did do so we would end up with this little cut in right here and that's not great we do need to control our speed as we go down the other side of the hills climbing up the hill it was fine just to have a full open throttle but we need a way to first recognize that we are indeed pitching down i'll use the pitch uh, navigation information there and of course also checking my speed if we get up too fast I put the brakes on for a little bit and of course we've got a little bit of a weird loop going on with the program here where I'll put on the brake and then immediately take it off in the same tick it, it ends up doing the right thing though as we come screaming up to checkpoint 5, we have covered all of the major control systems that this craft has on it. We control the navigation and we control the speed. But uh, as you just saw from the little hop that we performed there, there is one major control system I didn't put in that I am regretting at this point, And that is a bank angle feedback. So that if it was tilting too far, it will turn downhill, possibly down downhill. That This is why I didn't put it in, because I didn't know exactly how I wanted to deal with it. But I did know if I, wanted, if I was banking too far... I really should do something to make my craft just a little bit more stable. This is kind of why I put those uh, landing gear at the front. They're not just cute eyes. They are also a very rudimentary self-writing mechanism. Uh, zooming out, we can see that the actual mission took us all the way around the main mountain at Juno Village. A village that has a shocking lack of vegetation. Now, don't get me wrong, I am happy to have that. It's something that I've only really just noticed in the edit, though. Uh, any trees would really have messed me up here. Now, we were talking about the bank angle, and you can see where this may actually start causing me a little bit of trouble. Because we're not pitching down, I have got my throttle wide open, and the craft is doing all sorts of crazy things. At minimum, I should have slowed down when we're on a crazy angle like that, because uh, we can see an encroaching problem with this. Uh, I'm going along at quite the angle, and I'm going to hit a little bump, and then my wheels are coming off the wall. Thankfully, the craft managed to just handle it through basic wide wheel design. Uh, I gave it a, a wide wheelbase relative to its height, and that managed to keep it nice and stable. But that that's definitely something we're going to have to uh, work on with our rovers that are out on the field. We can't, we can't have them rolling down a hill like that. Now, we're going to encounter a problem that we normally have with my uh, programs here. I didn't tell this when to stop, so um, we're going to check in with this one in a little bit. Before we go and grab another contract, I want to bring us back to the tech tree. I've got 75 points to spend up here, and as much as it would be great to get maybe some heat shielding, maybe some better parachutes, something like that, if we come down to this uh, novice managers, we can enable the map view. We've been playing this whole game without a map of any description. Wouldn't it be great to have a map? Yeah, I've got to go ahead and grab that. I, I could also go ahead and buy some, like, dead weight and stuff like this, but wh whatever. If I scroll all the way down, we've got different wheels, and you know what? I've been making a lot of use of wheels recently, so yeah, I'm definitely going Going to grab that back on the main screen up at the career uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we could be getting here but the one that's got caught my eye is the CubeSat mission go and deliver uh, one CubeSat to a 
an orbit with an apoapsis of 100 kilometers, a periapsis of 95, give or take more than what it actually wants. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about uh, that particular part of the mission parameters, but we will take it. Uh, and also, uh, if we're going to take that, we should also take the light speed contract that wants us to get above the atmosphere and fly faster than 300 kilometers per second to do the CubeSat mission. We're going to have to meet those parameters. So I'm definitely grabbing that as well. Wow. A rocket launch to low Drew orbit shouldn't be a problem for the current incarnation of the staging up, and indeed the programming only needs a little bit of tweaking as well. At the moment, the uh, program is taking what I would call a waypoint approach to getting up to orbit. When we're at a certain altitude, turn to a certain degree, when we hit a certain speed, face prograde, and fly that all the way up to orbit. Nice little waypoint approach there. I like that. There is what I think to be another way that we could be doing this. I think there could be some sort of what I would like to describe as a functional approach where we give it a number like our current apoapsis height or maybe our current altitude and it spits out a variety of numbers for control of the rocket I, th I think these would be two different ways of doing it one very discreet at this point do this at this point do that and the other one being these numbers say and so we're going to curve our way I'd like to switch to the functional model but uh, there's a few issues that need solving there unlike the thing that just happened in the background the staging the programming that has been taking care of the staging it was something that we got in maybe the second episode the first time that we managed to get some sort of connector anyway all it does is checks the amount of fuel that we have in the tank and when it hits zero it hits the stage i know it's not very complicated and i feel that when we switch to going to other planets it's going to start getting a little more complicated than that because of course we don't want it to be staging when we're maybe i don't know 10 meters off the floor we're in the part of the program now where it has recognized that we're close enough to apple axis that we should really start thinking about the other side of our orbit the peri Apsis. Uh, it's currently re registering as zero, even though it's below the surface and it does have a value. Juno very nicely gives you that value in terms of the surface, so it gives you a zero and you can do some very sensible mathematics with it. All of this middle section is just responsible for printing out the flight log on the left, or the information in it anyway. And then underneath we've got something that is kind of important. We are checking to see what our vertical speed is. Uh, as always, if we go past apoapsis, we're going from the high point, the apoapsis, to the low point point the periapsis which means we must be going downwards in our vertical speed uh, if that happens I like to pitch up a little bit to try and get my apoapsis just in front of me again and then carry on going uh, straight towards the horizon at all other times this little consideration to manage my apoapsis relationship to myself stops the apoapsis careening away off into space before the uh, periapsis has managed to even get out of the surface of the planet the next block of code is huge and ridiculous, but basically all it's saying is, hey, whilst our apoapsis and periapsis are outside of this range we've specified, see whether we're traveling up or down. If we're traveling up, we're going towards our, our apoapsis. That means we can most efficiently change our periapsis. Check, check the periapsis against the range we need and apply throttle as necessary when we get to the apoapsis. And that's exactly what happened here. I unfortunately sped my way through it and the CubeSat got fired off at a random direction. But that random sideways velocity is nothing in the face of the orbital velocity that it's got. So it's still well within the range needed for the missions. And indeed, two contracts now complete light speed for getting up, up to just getting up to orbital velocity, let's be honest here. And of course, the CubeSat mission for the package that we just managed to deliver. But of course, that, that is not the missions completely done. We need to bring this lump of hardware home or at least get it out of orbit. We can't we can't be that space company that just fires stuff off and leaves it up there and hopes that random forces and perturbations will take care of our rubbish for us. No, we are going to make sure that this at least gets in the atmosphere, ideally makes its way home. Beautiful sight of the, uh, I presume, white dwarf over there that this planet orbits around. One thing that I do need to work on is my return trajectory. We keep seeming to come back on the dark side. I'm not I'm not sure why. I think it's because I want to have an efficient burn, so I'm burning an apoapsis to bring my periapsis down, uh, and that just happens to be where we've lined everything up from our launch site. Uh, at some point, I should do something based maybe on time, or if I can find the location of the launch site relative to myself and do some weird vector addition, uh, well, vector subtraction, I suppose. No, no, the more I think about it, the more I know what it is. We've got a vector pointing from the center of the planet to the launch site, and a vector pointing from the center of the planet to 
us the dot product. The dot product will sell us when the two are lined up. The deeper and deeper I get into physics, the more the dot product get, comes up. We're doing it in special relativity right now. Anyway, in the background, it's getting warm. We are, of course, 30 kilometers into the atmosphere right now and still moving at roughly orbital speed, so things are starting to take a little bit of heat damage, but this is roughly as I wrote it up. I really was expecting to have my nose up a little bit more so we could shed off just a little bit more speed and hopefully avoid the big explosions. Didn't happen this time. Better luck next time. Re-entry. It's difficult. Last time we saw the buggy boy, he had finished his mission and grabbed the final checkpoint. At that point, the program didn't tell him to stop because it turns out I cannot consider the endings of things. I draw your attention mainly to the green bar below the nav ball or above the fuel levels, however you want to read it. That is the battery life that we have remaining here. Uh, with no target, the bug is just subject to the whims of gravity and slopes. And we're going to see where he ends up while I tell you about the people who make these flights possible. That's right, my patrons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you'll see a list of names. A list of names of the guys and girls who've got along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation in appreciation for all that we do here, the brain power put forth. And in appreciation for your appreciation, I say thank you. Thank you so much. And it was roughly about here that I realized the friction wasn't going to overcome the momentum and this is just going to carry on forever. So I ended it here in this steady state. Coming back into the career options, I feel like the next one we need to do is this learning to fly. It kind of rounds off all the missions that we've been doing today. We need to launch a new craft. We need to fly through a whole bunch of checkpoints and the track distance is 11 kilometers. It should be easy, right? Uh, and I'm also hoping that we can, is it the fast roller? What One of the, shockingly fast. I think we can stay under 15 kilometers and get to, uh, wh wh where was it? 100 meters per second. I don't actually know if we have a craft capable of doing this, but I feel like whilst we're doing some flying around at the end of the mission if we could just go in a straight line and hit hit the speed that we can we should be able to do that i, I, I think those two are synergistic contracts in the build area they've given me a plane i don't want your plane okay how do i stop this this thing the electric motors uh spin the predators generate thruster motors are set to spin in opposite directions this is this is very late in the game do you know how far we are in to be doing like this is this is the thing all right thank you for my you, you're just gonna give it to me like this i'm cancelling i'm out i'm not doing it <laughs> here at twitchy space aero industries we do things our own way i'm actually however gonna save this but i want to load where, where, where's flying taxi here we go look, look at this beast let let's give this a go and see how this goes of course we are gonna have to work on ooh, the, the the plan over here all this is junk let, let, let's bring together the good stuff so by now you should be used to seeing this whole block of telemetry don't worry about that that's just information to help me fly Fly. Uh, we count down, we take off, we hold a direction, we make sure we're pointing in the direction, uh, we find the home target. So we, we don't actually have anywhere here a fly to target. Mm, okay, I'm going to have to sit and think about this because the last mission that we had, we literally flew off the end of the runway carried on flying off the end of the runway, hit our two targets and we're happy with that. Well, or rather, I wasn't happy with that and then I made this thing to return home. Um, and, and, and all it does is fly over the top of the runway and drop that... Oh, no. Fly over the runway and drop a parachute. So ha having this working my way towards the target, that that is good. We, we need this. I feel like we could probably just survive on this. We don't need to return home, right? So I'm going to rip this bit out. Uh, let's put this over with the other dead code that I've got. In fact, this needs to be destroyed. It doesn't even work anymore. I just like the structure. <laughs> but this one, this, this is how we find the target. We can, we can look, go through all the structures. I find the closest structure to us, and that's got to be the runway. That, that, that's, that's how I did that. But that's not how we're going to be doing this. We're just going to be going towards whatever target we have uh, available to us. I don't know what happens here i i i need to make this much shorter because we'll never actually achieve this condition the, the, this will never happen but we will get close enough that the game will register that we're at the target and then it will refly okay i think we're at the point where we can get going this is a beast of a program let's just save it uh, uh, and get going i literally do not know what's going to happen at this point uh i, I what well, 
My best guess is we're going to slam into a wall and burn. Whilst I didn't expect failure, what I did not expect was that actually my aircraft was just going to take off too soon and fly over the top of the target. And then the way that I'm targeting the target, I've added a little bit on to make sure that I can fly through it rather than under it. And uh, of course, that means I just end up flying around in circles over the top of the target. Mm, some work needed. So I went away, I did a little bit of work, and we have come back here. I'm speeding my way through the takeoff process 150%. On the left-hand side, you can see a little bit of the telemetry data has changed. In particular, the target direction has changed to a plane relative coordinate system rather than a planet relative coordinate system. That does make steering a little bit easier. Still haven't quite solved that issue for going over the brow of the hill and making our way down the runway, but the deviation was small enough that we can uh, keep our heading straight down the runway and I've tweaked the settings just a little bit so that we take off a little bit later down the runway. First checkpoint has been reached, it's been beautiful. Uh, now I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here trying to figure out where we are going and which way we've got a point and for some reason the plane st first starts going to the left then goes to the right, inverts itself but somehow wanted to look in the right direction and then all, all mess just happens and I'm not even sure what's going on here unfortunately i have run out of all the time that i have for this week so next week we're gonna have to start here nice and strong i've got a new algorithm that i want to test out been sat thinking about this would you believe uh, so i want to uh, give that a go but i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye